So this is what we call an iterative closest point registration or fine registration. And this paper by Boucher basically talks about how we can utilize our, this, this very well-known uh, method for registering your, your uh, laser scanner point clouds from two different uh, scanners, giving an initial uh, basically target-based registration. You can now increase the redundancy. How? If you have point cloud one and point cloud two, you find basically by means of the target-based registration, an initial registration, right? This is either target-based or point-based registration on top of each other. Then what you do is you find the closest point from the first and the second point cloud because these are close enough together still, uh, but they're not exactly the same. So you basically increase that redundancy by finding each and each, because target base, you're going to use it, let's say with five, 10, 20 different targets, but you might have millions of points. So if you can basically use those points together and then iteratively improve that registration, it's most likely going to provide a better result. Um, the problem is that, that you have to be mindful of the re resolution of your data as well, because if your resolution is uh, higher uh, than the accuracy that you're demanding from your registration, uh, then there's going to be a problem, right? Because you would only be able to find, if you have a one centimeter difference between two points, you would only be able to find points that are within one centimeter. So you cannot accept or expect that your registration uh, that, that is using the closest points between two scanners that has let's say one centimeter difference to have a millimeter accuracy. So that is also another thing that you need to pay attention to. And the other aspect is that this course registration, that, that initial target-based registration needs to be uh, uh, relatively accurate in order for this to converge. So what ends up happening is that you find the closest point between the first and the second one. Basically one is a source, one is a, a reference, right? Uh, uh, and and uh, Basically, one is, let's say, your, your BIM, and the other one is your point cloud. Uh, basically, you, you need to find how you would be able to match that together with the second one. So you find the distance between every point of, of the first to the second one. And if it's less than a predefined threshold, let's say, you know, that that is dictated by your resolution, by your instrument uh, uh, specifications in terms of the errors. From that, you perform a rigid body transformation given all of those points that are corresponding. So any point between the first and the second that are closest, closer than this threshold that we have. So we find the closest point, And if that point is closer than this particular threshold, they are used in our rigid body transformation. So instead of having the targets as our point correspondences, we assume that the closest points are our point correspondences. So we perform a rigid body transformation or a similarity transformation if we don't have the scale or we want to basically be flexible for the scale as an additional degree of freedom. Then if your RMS of your final rigid body transformation, every time that we're doing it, if it's more than your threshold that you want it to be, you go again back and then you do it again. So this RMS is the root mean square. This is the root mean squared of the dif uh, distances uh, between or uh, typically a, 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 an average, essentially, of the distances between the first and the second scanner after you perform the rigid body transformation. If it is smaller than a threshold that we predefined, then you can say, okay, that's good. If it's not, then it has to go back. Sometimes because we might not know the resolution of this or the calculation of that is going to be challenging, instead of having an absolute, uh, basically, uh, value for your, uh, for your threshold for your uh, root mean squared error, what you do is you say, if the root mean squared error between the previous iteration and the next iteration is less than, let's say, uh, 0.01, some arbitrary value that is small, uh, then you can say that we can exit this algorithm. It's not going to get much better after this. 
meaning the difference between the residuals are not going to be that much different uh, every time that you're doing that. So that is also another way of doing it to, to make it converge a bit faster um, because this would be sometimes quite challenging to, to find in an absolute sense. So how can we utilize this in construction or in with respect to BIM? BIM is not a point cloud. This is, but this iterative closest point assumes between two point clouds. So what Boucher basically proposed is to uh, make your BIM uh, into a point cloud. So they used it by means of, of uh, laser scanners, meaning to say, okay, we find the laser scanner point and then we project it onto the closest plane there uh, for, the, for the model that exists. And once you project it onto it, we basically have that point. If that point is closer than a particular threshold, we, uh, we consider that as a point belonging to that point cloud. And then those would be the, the point and its projection onto that plane of that particular model would give you the point correspondences. And then from that, you can basically perform the iterative closest point between those two. So in a nutshell, you make your model into a set of simulated points. One easy way to do this, instead of going through finding all of the planes and you know looking through all, all various different aspects is to basically use cloud compare to simulate your point clouds from the model. You can utilize this for your final project as well, but I would recommend you actually find the planes and you project it properly onto it. But if you really, uh, really, really just want to do a quick, fast fix, you can do this. And by means of this, you basically select your meshes. You go to the tools in Cloud Compare, the edit, sorry, in Cloud Compare, and you go to the mesh and you say sample points. And once you do that, you can now change how many points per element you want. Now, this is where the subjectivity comes because we don't know which one, how many points there exist. Our hope is the more it is, the more chances we're going to have in order to find point, similar point correspondences between the point cloud and the model. So then we select them and then we go there and we merge these points together. And once we click that, it tells you, do you want to generate a scalar? You say yes. So it shows it by means of different scalars. Now, the case is that you see it's quite sparse, meaning that the points are not there. And you can, of course, find your point cloud and find the exact resolution there as well. Uh, but if you want a very quick fix, this is probably the quickest that you can find. So this is if you increase the number of points inside of it with an order of magnitude. So if you take a look at it, these two are different quite significantly, right? So one is much more denser than the other one. So the one that is denser would most likely provide a better option for you to be able to perform that iterative closest point registration. So the first was, how do we simulate point clause from the model? This is one very simple way. Uh, again, another way is to find that uh, the, the planes for each and every one of them in your uh, STL file, basically it's, uh, it's, you, can, you can save the FBX file that I've provided you in the STL format as well. And then from that, you basically find what the projection of the closest points to each and every one of these planes are going to be. You find the projection there, it's a simple mathematical problem of finding a projection of a point to a plane. Once you find that, that's going to be a point correspondence if it's closer than a particular arbitrarily defined threshold. The second part is you perform ICP. So the good thing is that Cloud Compare actually does provide ICP registration. So you have the point cloud, you have your uh, other, uh, let's say, uh, uh, generated or simulated point cloud, and then you click that button of finally register already roughly aligned point clouds. That's why you said, I said that these two need to be kind of better. So one is a reference 
and one is the aligned which is basically which one is going to be aligned towards the other one. And you can play around with the RMS difference and see in Cloud Compare, they use the RMS difference, right? I, told, I, I mentioned that some programs might do RMS as an absolute or RMS difference between two it, uh, consecutive iterations. If the RMS difference is less than a particular amount, we consider that there's no longer... Uh, uh, an improvement in the algorithm uh, or the improvement in terms of us as engineers is going to be very, very little, so we don't care about. And then we also talk about the final overlap there of how much we're expecting from this. You can add the adjust scale, meaning that it would perform a similarity. And then here it shows you what the a rotation matrix and the, basically your transformation matrix is going to be, and what is the final RMS um, by means of how many points that were considered. So this is what's important, is that uh, now it provides you with what your transformation is, and the transformation looked uh, pretty good overall. Like the original one that, we, uh, that I had performed was good, but then this provides even a better transformation in that sense. If you take a look at these two, they're pretty well aligned, but there are still problems with respect to, let's say, on the, the other side of it. Maybe I can I think I'm going to go, yes. So here, if you take a look at it, first of all, we're only able to perform this by means of how well our BIM has been uh, defined. So. If our BIM is not identifying this, this nice, basically, a base here, we have no means of identifying whether that particular point belongs to that plane or another plane, other than the fact that we know that, let's say, uh, our general accuracy needs to be better than a, a particular amount. So this is very important because we're only as good as how detailed our geometry of our BIM is going to be in detecting whether this plane belongs to this element or another element that must have existed. The other aspect is here. So it sacrificed basically this side to the other side as well because this isn't fitting as well. So this is another problem with ICP, which I'm going to talk about later on as well. And it's important for us to understand that this is only as good as how well the BIM and the point cloud are complying. If the BIM and the point cloud are not compliant, it is not going to work, right? If you're going to have a FIM level two, you cannot uh, carry out the, the, uh, the basic, uh, what is it called, the uh, ICP in order to improve this. Uh, you have to utilize your external measures. You can only use ICP if you are sure that your point cloud and your BIM are compliant with each other. Okay?